In this video, we'll speculate on three types of non-carbon based life. The search for alien life has long focused on one key ingredient, liquid water. Because for life as we know it, which is based on carbon, water is essential. But what if that focus is too narrow? What if life could be built on something entirely different? The assumption that life elsewhere must resemble life on Earth is known as carbon chauvinism. This term was coined by Carl Sagan in 1973, and it's the idea that carbon will be the primary building block for extraterrestrial life, similar to life on Earth. But that view might be limiting our imagination and our search. Scientists have long speculated about alternative chemistries for life. Life not based on carbon, but on elements like silicon. And this type of life could thrive in environments that would be instantly lethal to us. In this episode, we'll examine one of the most compelling possibilities, life based on silicon. And we'll take you to three extreme alien worlds where this strange form of life could in theory exist. This will be highly speculative and could be completely wrong. But science has at every turn shown us that our assumptions about the universe has been wrong. That is why it is important to keep an open mind. If we only look for what we know, we might miss what's already out there. Silicon might seem like a good substitute for carbon in alien life. It sits just beneath carbon on the periodic table, which means the two elements share many chemical properties. Like carbon, silicon can form four chemical bonds, making it theoretically capable of building complex molecules that could serve functions similar to DNA, proteins, or enzymes. And silicon is everywhere. It is the eighth most abundant element in the universe, found in sand, rocks, planets, and stars. But under the conditions we usually search for life, where there is Earth-like temperatures and water, silicon fails. Its molecular bonds are weaker than carbons, so complex silicon molecules break down more easily, and water actually destroys many silicon-based compounds. But silicon has a secret advantage. It thrives in extremes. In certain environments that are very hot or cold, certain silicon-based molecules could become more stable than their carbon counterparts. And while it doesn't work in water, if dissolved in exotic liquids or solvents, silicon may be able to form the backbone of a completely alien biochemistry. So let's explore three extreme alien worlds where silicon-based life might be possible. First, we'll visit hot sulfur worlds. On Earth, sulfur is toxic and corrosive, it rarely forms a liquid, and when it does, it destroys organic molecules. So planets rich in sulfur seem like the last place we could expect to find life. But at high temperatures, between 115 and 445 degrees Celsius, sulfur becomes a dense golden liquid. And in that state, it could act as a solvent for silicon-based molecules. This opens the door to a completely different kind of biochemistry, where liquid sulfur replaces water and silicon replaces carbon. One real-world example could be Jupiter's moon Io. This world is constantly reshaped by non-stop eruptions. Its surface is scattered with molten sulfur lakes and intense heat. These conditions might be just right for this form of exotic life. There's no shortage of energy sources on worlds like these. Some organisms might form microbial mats, absorbing sunlight, or in Io's case, radiation from Jupiter. Others might metabolize energy-rich compounds released by volcanoes. These microbes could form the base of an alien ecosystem, where more complex life might evolve. Imagine herbivore-like grazers gliding through molten sulfur lakes, feeding on layers of microbial mats. They might have tough, insulating exteriors to withstand volcanic heat. Instead of vision as we know it, they could use thermal sensing to locate sulfur currents or detect prey and predators. Over time, entire ecosystems built in silicon and sulfur might evolve. What could be instantly fatal to us could be the very foundation of life elsewhere. How can table salt, sodium chloride, be the foundation for a type of silicon-based life? On Earth, molten salts are rare and dangerous. They appear in industrial settings like nuclear reactors or metal processing, places far too hot and extreme for life as we know it. At room temperature, salts like sodium chloride are stable crystals. So the idea of life in molten salts might seem completely out of place. But at extreme temperatures, typically between 400 and 1500 degrees Celsius, salts like sodium chloride melt into dense electrically conductive liquids. 
These ionic fluids behave very differently from water, but might be compatible with silicon-based compounds. In these high temperature conditions, silicon-based molecules could remain stable and form complex molecules, which would be the chemical foundation for an alien biology. Do we know of any worlds with molten salts? Yes, K2141b. This is a very hot super-Earth located 202 light years away. It orbits so close to its star that the day site likely hosts oceans of molten rocks and salts. Surface temperatures would be over 2000 degrees Celsius, and this planet might host the perfect conditions for silicon-based life. Silicon-based life could exist suspended in these oceans, and it is very hard to guess what life in a world as extreme as this might look like, but let's try. Instead of soft carbon-based bodies, organisms on these type of worlds might be built from rigid silicon-based structures designed to survive extreme heat and corrosive ionic fluids. And to further endure the heat, they could evolve layered mineral shells for insulation, with protected cores where sensitive chemistry could take place. Some might float in molten salt oceans, using hollow silicate spheres to control their depth. Others might anchor to solid rock, growing slowly like crystalline coral, feeding on sunlight or energy-rich molecules. There could be more complex life swimming through the molten oceans, feeding on the coral or other simpler life forms. It is hard to imagine life in a world so different to ours. But what is fascinating is that something as familiar as table salt could be the solvent of life on another world. Silicon might not only thrive in the heat, it could also survive in the deep cold. On Earth, temperatures near minus 180 degrees Celsius would freeze everything. Many types of carbon-based molecules become brittle, and chemical reactions nearly stop. It seems like the last place life could evolve. But silicon behaves differently. Some compounds could become more stable in the cold. And while water freezes, compounds such as methane and ethane remain liquid and could function as alternative solvents to support slow, stable chemistry. This opens the door to cryogenic ecosystems. Where silicon-based life unfolds in molecules such as ethane and methane that are liquid at very low temperatures. One real-world candidate is Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon. It has lakes and rivers of liquid methane and ethane, a thick atmosphere and surface temperatures around minus 179 degrees Celsius. While Earth-like life would freeze, silicon-based organisms might adapt. Life could form in methane lakes, icy shorelines or porous underground pockets. If life existed on Titan, it would be slow and strange. Instead of soft bodies, creatures here could have thick rubbery skins, made from chemical compounds that don't freeze or crack. They could live in Titan's lakes of liquid methane, absorbing nutrients through spongy, porous bodies, almost like giant drifting snowflakes. Or they could be like corals, absorbing nutrients in the methane lakes. Other organisms might spread slowly across the icy shores, sheet-like organisms that expand gradually instead of moving around. Because it is so cold on Titan, this slows down chemical reactions. Therefore, to observers, life here would unfold in slow motion. Even in the coldest and darkest worlds, life may find a way. Not with water or carbon, but with silicon and methane. Silicon-based life challenges everything we think we know about biology. It reminds us that life doesn't have to look like us, it might not need water or carbon or earth-like conditions. By expanding our view beyond carbon and water, we open the door to entire alien ecologies that may already be out there, waiting to be discovered. One thing is certain, we are likely to be surprised, and accepted views will be challenged by what we find. Even carbon-based life could exist in weird conditions alien to Earth. In another video, I explore how life might evolve in the dense atmosphere of an alien world. And you can see that video by clicking here. And be sure to remember to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos on what alien life might look like.